Welcome to this video, great to have you here. In this video, we'll have a look at progressive web apps. A super important topic, extremely hot these days, and a topic on which I created a very comprehensive course on Udemy. Link can be found in the video description, of course. Now, in this video, though, I want to share the first module of this course with you. There, we'll have a look at the most important question, what are progressive web apps? We'll build our first little progressive web app together and we will learn which topics make up a progressive web app, which features. Now, we'll probably use some of these features in future projects on this channel and therefore I'd be more than happy to welcome you on the course. But first, let's dive into the first course module and learn these basics I mentioned. Welcome to this course, it's great to have you on board. In this course, we're going to dive super deep into the topic of progressive web apps. Now, progressive web apps, that is a term which is pretty hot these days, but it is a topic which is definitely here to stay. Progressive web apps in the end describe a set of features of technologies you can add to your existing web applications to turn them into native app-like, native mobile app-like experiences using device features like the camera and providing offline access. Now, in this course, you will learn all about what progressive web apps are, why you might want to use them, and you will, of course, use them and learn all the core technologies that make up this term, progressive web app. You will, of course, all learn this by building a real course project and adding these features step by step. We'll start simple, but we'll soon add a way to install our application on the home screen of a real mobile device. We'll find a way of making our app available even if internet connection is lost. And we'll do way more. We'll access the device camera and location. We'll be able to send push notifications and synchronize data in the background even if we are offline. This is what we'll build and learn in this course. Now who is teaching you? My name is Maximilian Schwarzmuller and I'm a freelance web developer. I worked a lot with progressive web apps and I can tell you there's never been a better place or time to learn it. The features which make up progressive web apps are well supported already. You can already reach a huge audience with all these features. And the cool thing is you build progressive web apps in a way that your web apps still work on older browsers too. Now is the time to learn it, to be prepared for a future where probably every web application will be a progressive web application since it offers significant advantages and makes your application much more enjoyable to your users. So let's dive into progressive web apps by answering one important question first. What are progressive web apps? It's a term which you might have heard already, but sometimes it's hard to really say what it means. In the end, progressive web apps is, is just a term referring to a couple of features you can add to any web application, to any web page running in the browser, therefore, to enhance it. This is what progressive web apps in the end are about. You progressively enhance your existing web pages to feel and work more like native mobile apps. I'm not just talking about responsive design so that it looks good on both devices. We're doing this since a couple of years already, or you should be at least. I'm talking about other things you know from native mobile apps, like your app working if you're offline, it having an icon on the home screen, things like accessing the device camera or the location, synchronizing data in the background. These are all features which were hard to do in web applications in the past. Nowadays, we got browser support in a lot of browsers for that, and we can therefore use that. Now, in this course, I will show you how to use all these technologies which make up a progressive web app. And of course, I'll also explain which technologies these are. And I will show you how to implement them in a way that it also works on older browsers, that your web page still works on older browsers, because that's the core thing. You progressively enhance a web application. It's not a all or nothing move. It's not like it doesn't work on older browsers anymore. It just means if you have a modern browser on a mobile device, you get an awesome experience. Otherwise, you'll get the experience you've gotten anyways. There are three main words, I'd say, by which you can summarize progressive web apps. They should be reliable, which means they should load fast and even work if you're offline. 
at least a part of the application should work if you're offline. Now, this is really a core thing of progressive web apps. We're talking a lot about that initial load, the first time you visit an application, when you open it. Because if you consider an uh, application running on your mobile device, most of them start up pretty fast. So long loading times, you don't want that. Additionally, it should be fast, not just during load up, but also once it runs. It should react to user input, it should provide animations, it should be able to access native device features in an intuitive way. And we also want to make sure that it's engaging. We want to get our users back into the app. We want to offer features like push notifications to inform them even if the application is closed. Yes, you heard that correctly. This is what you can do and what we will do in this course. So that is what makes up a progressive web app. Now, why would we want to build one? Obviously, we have some good arguments here, but couldn't we achieve the same by just building a normal mobile app with Java, Android, or with Swift Objective-C? Well, let's find out which arguments speak for a web app instead of a native mobile app. Let's compare native apps with mobile apps to find out if it makes sense to build a web app to begin with. Here's a number which might discourage you, but no worries, I'll say more about this number over the next seconds. If we have a look at the usage of our smartphone, here's a report by Comscore from 2015, made in the US we see that the average smartphone user spends 87% of his time in native apps, whereas only 13% of the time go into the mobile web. So the user visiting a web page in the browser on the mobile phone. Now this is clearly discouraging because why would we build a mobile web app if a native app is so much better? Let's first of all find out why people spend so much time in native apps. One important factor are push notifications. They drive them back into the apps. You get a push notification, you tab on it, you're back into the app. Push notifications communicate with you even if the application is closed, even if the phone is ducked away into your pocket. Additionally, we have home screen icons, which make it easy to start the app. You pull out your phone, you have some time to spare, just open one of the apps and that's it. This is how you use it, right? That's harder for web apps, web pages, of course. You can add them to the home screen, but it's not like you're prompting the user to do so. You don't have an app store where people would go and search for you. So getting on the home screen traditionally has been hard for web apps. It's a huge plus for native apps though. Additionally, we have access to native device features like the camera, geolocation, and other things. And of course, many native apps also work offline. At least a certain part of these apps works offline. These are all good reasons why people are using native apps. Now, as I already said, the cool thing about progressive web apps is that we can basically bring all these things into the web too. So maybe this can switch relations. That's not the only argument for the mobile web though. Even though today a lot of the people are using native apps, let's have a look at some arguments against native apps. One argument is that you, of course, have to learn two languages if you want to support iOS and Android, or you need multiple developers. Would be nicer if you could just write an application in the language you already know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and so on. So if you could just use web application. Now, the better argument is this number though. Even though the majority of users uses native apps, 80% of the time goes into the top three apps which unfortunately probably isn't your app. It's most likely Google, Facebook, WhatsApp, something like that. So there's only very little time to spare for other apps. And here's one other figure. How many new apps do you guess does the average user install per month on his phone or her phone? Does you guess something? One, five, 10? It's zero, absolutely zero. The average user, doesn't install a new app. You install new apps if you have a new phone, but thereafter, you rarely add new apps. These are the statistics. That makes it clear that the web has something big to offer. 
its reach. Let's compare the reach. We have the top thousand native apps and web pages visited from mobile. In the native apps, we have 3.3 million users. In the web apps, we have 8.9. So even though less time goes towards the web, more people are visiting it. We can reach a broader audience there. The reason, of course, is connected to that figure of the 80% being spent in the same app. People do spend a lot of time in native apps, but always in the same apps. The average app doesn't get that many visitors. Now, the web has a huge advantage. You don't need to install anything from the app store, which takes time and which you have to do actively. You search for something, Google shows the result, boom, you're on your web page. You take a bookmark and you're back. So this is how you use the web. It's so much easier to get onto these web pages and that's a huge advantage of the web. Now, since we can get advantages of the native device, offline access, camera, and so on, to the web, combined with that figure, sounds like progressive web apps aren't that bad of an idea. Let's confirm this hypothesis by having a look at this comparison. We have native apps and traditional web apps. So no progressive web app, a traditional web app, which doesn't offer access to any native device features. If we compare them by capability and reach, the native app, of course, has awesome capabilities. We can leverage the operating system and access a lot of native device features. On the other hand, the reach isn't that good for the reasons we heard about. A web app, on the other hand, a traditional one, doesn't really have access to all these device features. It probably doesn't run offline, so that's not too good. But the reach is really good. You can find it via Google. It's just one address in the URL bar away. A progressive web app now combines the best of both worlds. There, we can access a lot of the native device features. We can make it available offline. And we do have good reach, of course, because it's still a web app still running in the browser. This is why well, we will focus on progressive web apps in this course and why learning them really is a good idea. You can get the best of both worlds and deliver awesome experiences to your users. So over the last lectures, we learned what progressive web apps are and why we might want to build our next web application as a progressive web app. Now, let me show you an example for a progressive web app. At app.ft.com, you can visit the application page of the Financial Times. This runs in the browser, but it is a progressive web app. It feels a lot like an app if we navigate around there with the animations and the menu. And if I open my Chrome Developer Tools and I switch into device mode by pressing this icon here, you see, of course, it also looks like a mobile app. Now, a cool thing happens if I now do the following. If I go to Network in the Chrome Developer Tools, which I strongly recommend using, I recommend using Chrome for this course because it supports all the features you're going to learn about and its developer tools are awesome. More about this later. So if you go to Network and click on Offline here, you can simulate that you're offline. Now, if I reload that page, you still see some content. The images are not there, I give you that, but you can still read that article here. This is because it is a progressive web app offering you some nice features. Now, Google even built a tool which you can use to judge how well a site performs as a progressive web app. And it's built right into the developer tools if you're using the latest version of Chrome. It's light to house. If you don't have the audit tab here though, you can simply search for Lighthouse Chrome and then find the page where you get installation instructions about Lighthouse. You can add it as a Chrome extension then. Now, if you do have that audit tab, let's perform an audit on the Financial Times page here. And this will now do a couple of checks to find out how well this performs as a progressive web app. Let's wait for this to finish and analyze the results. So the test is done and overall the page does okay. A couple of features are missing, which would make it a really good or awesome progressive web app. And the performance isn't that great here, but that might also be connected to my performance here on the machine whilst I'm recording. So this is a decent progressive web app implementing a lot of the features. 
And I will also explain in one of the next lectures that it is okay to not reach 100 here. You do have the choice between going all the way to it, none at all, or any step in between. You can add features of that progressive web app world as you need them in your app. So this is nice. Now I want to show you another page. You can't open that because it's offline, but this is the course project we'll build. It's an Instagram clone, a simple one of course, as a progressive web app. It looks and feels nice, in my opinion. The cool thing is that this of course is a progressive web app. Now one thing we can do is, we can take an image. So let's allow camera access and hey, here I am. So let me quickly take an image here. You'll see I'm sitting in front of a green screen. Let's also get my location, so I'll need to allow that uh, to fetch it. It'll be masked here, I don't wanna show my full location. And then let me enter some title during my recordings. And keep in mind, this is in the browser, it's just looking like on a real device. Throughout the course though, I will also show how the app runs on a real device. So for now, let me click post here to post this. Now it's safe for syncing and if we reload, there it is already. So this has been saved on some server. Now again, you can't access this page here, but you will build it on your own and we will also ship it to the web at the end of the course. Now thus far you might think it's nice, that camera thing is nice, but not super impressive. Now let me turn off my Wi-Fi here to really have no internet connection anymore. If I reload the page, you can ignore these errors because they are basically catched and I still see my page, even my content here, and I can still navigate around. Now there's one more thing I want to do for which I will need internet connection, so let me quickly turn it on again. I want to enable push notifications. So let me click here and allow access. And now I get this push notification here on my other screen, so unfortunately this isn't recorded, because push notifications were turned on. Now with that, let me now go offline by turning off the Wi-Fi, and now I'll try to send another post. Let me take a picture. And let's send this from offline mode. I'm in Munich. Let me hit post here and it's also saved for synchronization. Now clearly it can't send it, I have no internet connection. So let's say I now come back online because my Wi-Fi re-establishes connection. Now it's syncing this and if I reload the app, here it is from offline. This is what makes this a progressive web app. A lot of the features you might know from your native apps, but you haven't seen that often in a web app. This works fully offline, it caches everything, it accesses the device camera, has push messages as you saw, and much more. So now let me conclude this by making an audit on this app too, so that you can see what you're going to build in this course. Let's perform an audit here with Lighthouse again and let's see how many features about progressive web apps I packed into this application and what you're going to learn in this course therefore. I'll be back once this audit finished. The audit finished and here you can see I got a 100 in progressive web app. So this is a perfect progressive web app using all the features that make up a progressive web app. You see the other metrics are also amazing and that means you're going to learn a lot of useful things in that course. Because we'll start from scratch, we'll build this app together and add all these features that lead to this 100 together. Can't wait to get started with you. Now that we learned a lot about what progressive web apps are and why they are awesome, let's build our first very simple one. And for that, as I already mentioned it, Please use Chrome. I strongly recommend it because whilst we will build it in a way, the course project I mean, that it also works on older browsers, you of course want to see all the new features you're using, right? And Chrome is one of the browsers which supports most of them or all of them actually we will use in this course. So I recommend using it. Now throughout the course I will always highlight which browser supports what, but again Chrome is the one supporting everything. Additionally, the developer tools are awesome, I'm going to use it and it'll be easier for you to follow along if you're using Chrome. Of course you can go back to your favorite browser outside of this course again then. Besides Chrome, we'll also need Node.js. Now we're not writing a server-side application here, but 
Node.js ships with npm, its package manager, and it's the de facto package manager for development projects, for front-end JavaScript development projects. And we will use it too, to install some dependencies, mainly one dependency, a development server to really simulate that our application runs on a server, even though it runs on the local device. So make sure to visit nodejs.org and simply download the latest version. If your problem, if you're having problems with that, choose 6.11 instead, or whatever the latest stable version is at the point of time you're viewing this. So make sure to download and install Node.js. Again, we're just using it to bring up that development server and to manage our dependencies, our libraries, and so on. Once you got all of this set up attached to this lecture, you can find a download. Download it and open it in your favorite IDE, Sublime, Atom, WebStorm, Microsoft Visual Studio Code, whatever that is. This is the starting project we'll use here. Later in this course, we'll use a different project though. Now here, first of all, with Node.js installed, you need to open up your terminal or command prompt on your operating system. And this here is the normal terminal, just integrated into my IDE, and navigate into that project folder. And in there, simply run npm install. npm refers to this Node package manager we installed automatically together with Node. Once you hit enter, this one will install all dependencies, which is only one in our case. You can check it in the package.json file. It's this HTTP server here. Now, this simply is a development only server. Why don't we just double click on the HTML files? Because if we double click on them, we use the file protocol and that's not HTTP. And for that reason, all the features I want to show you won't work because it's not really served like a web application. We want to simulate it as such though and test it as such, hence we need a web server. And this is a super simple development only server where we don't need to write any code to get it to run our app. Once you did install it, you can run npm start in the same terminal and keep that running because the server needs to keep running. And then here you see the URL under which you can see your application. Now let's open it by simply navigating back to the browser and entering it here. You could also open localhost 3000, by the way. And you will see, this is the application I wanna start with. It plays a nice little animation, showcasing the advantages of progressive web apps and what you're going to learn in this course. It's nice, but it's a normal website. Let's turn it into a progressive web app together. Back into your project, open the public folder and there you see that sw.js file. That's going to become important. I'll explain what it is, a service worker, later in this course. Now, for now, let's go to source, JS, and then the app.js file. Here's a very simple code to run that animation by simply adding CSS classes every X seconds. Now, before we execute that, let's do something else. Let's run navigator.serviceworker register and there pass a string where you point to slash swjs so basically to that file that's all for now just add this line now save it and thereafter reload your page now let's open up the developer tools and go to the application tab if you click on service worker you now see that this is populated. We'll come back to what exactly happened here later in the course. You also see I'm previewing this as a native device or as a mobile device. You can always toggle between these displays. I like this quite a lot because we're building something which should look good there. So why don't we use it here? And now with that, let's take offline here or under network offline. Also make sure you disable the cache here under network. Now if we reload the page, you see, it still works, even though we have no internet connection anymore. And you could say, yeah, makes sense. It's running on my local machine, right? Yeah, but if we take the offline button here, Chrome will basically simulate that this internet is, is off, that this browser can't connect to this server. And keep in mind, we have a real web server here because we did start one. We didn't just double click the HTML file as I explained. So this really is working in offline mode. And if you don't believe me, go to application service worker and click unregister there and reload again. Now you get this, there is no internet connection screen. This is our first application where we successfully register a service worker, 
so that our application works even if we are offline. Now we'll learn much more in this course, but this is a great first step. And we'll build up on this and learn how we can use different strategies to decide what to store for offline usage and what not, how to add these push notifications and much more. I can't wait to dive into that with you. So with that, let's not lose any time and let's continue seeing what exactly makes up progressive web apps and which features you're going to learn about in this course. Thus far, we already had a look at what progressive web apps are, why we might want to use progressive web apps or build them, and what we're going to build in this course. Now I want to have a look at the core building blocks, technologies we use when building progressive web apps. Because thus far, we only had some buzzwords. We heard about offline access and push notifications, but let's now really have a look at all the features we use and you'll learn about in this course when building progressive web apps. A core feature are service workers. Service workers are supported in modern browsers like Chrome and service workers are basically JavaScript running in a background process, even if your application is closed. Service workers are a core building block because they allow us to get offline access, to cache some files and serve them if we don't have an internet connection. And they also give us access to other progressive web app related features. For example, background synchronization, sending a request once internet connections reestablished. We use service workers for that. Push notifications would be another example. We use service workers for that because they are running in the background independent of currently opened tabs. Service workers therefore are the core building block and I have a couple of modules diving into all the different things you do with them, also advanced lectures, advanced modules, you'll learn a ton about them in this course. Service workers are not the only building block. Whilst we can use them for offline access, background synchronization, web push and more, the application manifest is also an important building block. You're going to learn about this in the next course module already. The application manifest makes your application installable on home screens. Not installed through an app store, but instead, well, you will see it. You can basically install a web app and it then will do more than just open that web page. A web manifest is therefore super important and another feature you typically use or you use in any progressive web app you're building. And then you can add more and more features. Now, besides the technology we use, Responsive design is another core building block. Now, to be honest, I won't dive too much into it in this course because there already are whole courses covering this out there. And responsive design is something we're doing since a couple of years already. So therefore, definitely make sure you know this and I will touch on it in this course, but I will focus on all the new technologies, all the things which aren't covered that well in the internet yet. Now, and then there are other things like the geolocation API or the camera API so that we can access various native device features. And I will dive into that in this course too. These are the core building blocks. In the end, always keep in mind, progressive web app is just a term. It in its closest definition refers to an app which uses service workers and has application manifest but it typically also means applications which are responsive, which offer background sync, which use web push and more. And you're going to learn all of that in that course. Now that we learned about the core building blocks, let me make one comparison which is sometimes made and which is kind of wrong. Single page applications and progressive web apps. Now, in case you don't know, single page applications are applications, web applications, powered by JavaScript, typically created with a framework like React, Angular, or Vue, where the framework re-renders the DOM all the time to react to user input, to display different pages, whilst you only have one single page, one HTML file. Single page applications are not the same as progressive web apps, and actually progressive web apps, as I mentioned, is just a collection of technologies and techniques, and it runs totally independent of your app being a single page application or not. You can turn any single page application into a progressive web app and the same is true for any traditional multi-page application where you render your views from your server via Node, PHP, whatever it is. So this is the wrong comparison. 
A single page application is powered by JavaScript, as I said, typically using a framework. It is highly reactive because things happen instantly, because we don't send a request to the server and wait for a new page. And as I said, we only have that single page. A progressive web app is just a collection of technologies, can be used anywhere. It typically also uses a lot of JavaScript because the service worker, for example, uses JavaScript and the service worker is very uh, important. But the service worker isn't controlled by any framework anyways. So the JavaScript you use here can be vanilla JavaScript without a framework. And actually, in the course project, we'll use a project which just uses vanilla JavaScript and multiple pages. Because I wanted to show the most flexible project I can to really show you that what you learn in this course can be used in any project, no matter if that's a single page app or not. Towards the end of the course, I have a module where I show you how to turn your React, Angular or Vue app into a progressive web app. But for the majority of the course, I just show you code which just works in any project, no matter if single page or multi page. Now a progressive web app still also aims to be highly reactive, you could say. But here we're focusing more on the initial loading time. We want to get something onto the screen fast, for example by caching it, by even making it available offline. It's not so much about what happens thereafter. Of course there are some things we want to use like animations to provide a nice user experience, but we don't care if you load new pages for every request or if you use JavaScript to re-render the page. Oftentimes you will see single page applications being progressive web apps as well, but as I mentioned, that's no hard requirement. And finally, as I just said, progressive web apps can work with multiple files too, and actually that's not that uncommon. You can absolutely use a progressive web app anywhere. You can turn any web page into a progressive web app if you want to. So that's the wrong comparison. We can use the progressive web app concept on a single page application, but we can also use it on any other application. There's this other core concept I want to emphasize as well. It's a progressive web app. What does the progressive actually mean? It doesn't mean you can use the device camera. Indeed, it basically means that we can progressively enhance our web application. So let's consider this starting point. We have three different web apps. One is a legacy web app, so an older web app using older technology and probably also supporting older browsers. Then we have an existing modern app, which is maybe also a, a traditional web app, not, not a single page application, nothing fancy, but it targets modern browsers because maybe it's an internal company tool or some page which mainly addresses tech enthusiasts, something like that. And maybe we have an upcoming project and there we can pretty much bank on people having more modern browsers because support is already getting better, more people are using modern browsers, it's probably going to be better in the future too. So with these three different apps, can we only turn the upcoming project into a progressive web app now? Because rewriting an existing app from scratch certainly isn't an option. So if you want to turn this into a progressive web app, you can't just start over. Well, let's have a look at the near future. We can simply add some features to our existing app. And this is actually something I will show you in the course. We will take a project and add features step by step. And you can stop at any given point. You can stop after adding an app manifest and a basic service worker. You can stop after you implement the basic caching, advanced caching, push notifications. You can stop all the time. Now your existing modern app, here you can maybe implement some more progressive web app features. And for the upcoming project, yeah, there, you can start from scratch, obviously, so you can fully implement it as a progressive web app right from the start and plan everything with that in mind. Now in the further away future, our older application might use some or multiple progressive web app features, but not all of them, and that's perfectly fine. You don't have to use zero or 100%. You can absolutely use 40%. Of all the features you learn in the course, pick the ones which enhance your application and add them. Now, therefore, our middle app here maybe is a completely converted progressive web app in the end because we added all the features which make up a progressive web app. We have solid caching in different circumstances. We use push notifications uh, and all that stuff. And our upcoming project 
already of course was planned as a progressive web app and therefore also is one. And this is important because I know that a lot of people are looking at all these technologies and are saying, well, I don't have the resources or the time to rebuild my old app and I have to support old browsers anyways. These users are never going to see the new features. And I can only answer you, that's not a problem. Simply add the features which enhance your application right now and feel free to turn it into a complete progressive web app if you have the time. Definitely consider it for all upcoming projects though. So that was a lot of talking about what progressive web apps are, why we use them and what we're going to build in this course. Now let's see what exactly we'll learn in this course and how we'll walk through all these topics. Well, right now we're still getting started, but we're almost done. And the next module, we'll have a look at the application manifest. This is this document which tells the browser more about our web application and you'll learn everything about it in the second module. Thereafter, we'll already dive into service workers because they are such a core building block. Now, service workers, and in general, a lot of progressive web app features use promises and the fetch API. Therefore, I'll have a short module where I briefly refresh the knowledge about these core concepts so that we're all on the same page because we're going to use a lot of promises and the fetch API throughout the course. It's easy to use that. I just want to make sure that we all know what we're using there. Now, once we got that refresher, we'll head back to service workers and learn how we can use them to provide offline access through caching. We'll then continue on this road and dive into advanced caching strategies using service workers to really have the right strategy for whichever asset you're going to load in whichever situation in your app. After that, we'll have a look at how we can cache dynamic content with indexed DB because thus far, we will have cached assets like CSS files, script files, images. Now, what about JSON data you get back from a REST endpoint? We can cache that too, and there you will learn how to best do that. Once we did that, we'll have a look at responsive design. Now, already said, I won't dive into it super deeply here because there are whole courses about that, and you can indeed create whole courses about that. So I just want to give you some core features, some basics you need to know but I definitely encourage you to pick up a separate course on this topic. It's super important and more than I could fit into this course where I really want to focus on all the other core technologies. Now with responsive design added, we'll go back to these new core technologies and we'll have a look at background synchronization next, which describes the process of us sending something whilst we're offline and therefore of course it would fail. But of a way to store that and send it when the internet connection is re-established, even if we did close the application by then. You'll learn it in this module. And thereafter, we have a look at web push notifications. So how we can receive and send push notifications, even if our application is closed. Now, as a next step, we'll have a look at the media API and geolocation. These are not strictly core features of a progressive web app, but since you typically use native device features in progressive web apps, it's super important to know how to use two of the most important and popular features you can use on a real device. And I'll dive into this in this module. Now, after that, we learned a lot about the different technologies and we'll see that it can get hard to manage all our service worker code. Therefore, we'll then dive into automated service worker management I will show you a tool you can use to make a lot of the things you had to do manually before easier by doing them automatically. And once we did this, I'll dive into single page applications and progressive web apps to show you how to turn your number one favorite framework application into a single page application with these. With that, we'll have learned a lot. This course will do more than just get you started with progressive web apps it will really allow you to use that knowledge, dive deeper, use it in your next project. And I'm super excited to get started. So let me spend one more word about the course project setup and how you get the most out of this course. And then we'll get right started and dive into the application manifest. 
I hope you enjoyed this first module of this course. Now there we had a look at what progressive web apps are and why they are awesome. Obviously, I'd be more than happy to welcome you in this course so that we can go through all these topics together and then also, of course, use some of them in future projects on this channel. Hopefully see you there. Have a great time. Bye.